Okay guys, so we are at part two of just a basic Tinkercad tutorial. This is where we left off at. So I have this object here. Once again, I'm right clicking on my mouse holding it down and that allows me to adjust my camera. So this object is selected currently. Up here you have a delete feature. You also have duplicate. For this one, let's go ahead and try duplicate. Let's say I'd like to have three of these. So I'm actually going to click it two more times to get my three. One, two. And you say, great, where's all three? They're all right here. <laughs> so I'm actually just going to click away from it, click back on it. And I'm going to use my arrow keys. That's uh, something you could do. You don't have to click it with your mouse and drag it if you don't want to. Drag your object around, I mean. You can use your arrow keys. And you can move your objects around however you need them to. This is the duplicate feature. And then, for example, if I wanted to get rid of one of my objects I have created, that's what the delete is for. Real simple. I say, uh oh, maybe I didn't want to get rid of all those. Well, you do have the undo feature, and once you do that, you will have the redo feature. So I can bring those back. So let's go ahead and start fresh. Let's take a look over here. You have a category basic shapes and they are pretty basic. There are different categories that you can choose from and there's also a search feature included. There's lots of community uploads and stuff like that. Different designs. But for now let's stick with basic shapes. So I'm going to take a cube and let's take a cylinder. Now in this case I want to resize so I can click on my point and I can type in what size I want it to be and I'm set up for millimeters or I could simply click and hold and just drag whatever size I need it to be. I can also make it taller, shorter, anything I need it to be. Little arrow above is where you're going to adjust the Z plane. So I'm just going to bring it up off our work plane a little bit. I'm going to use my arrow keys, bring it over wherever I need it to be. I'll change my camera around a little bit. And if I need to get that view on that object I'm on, I need it centered up, make it easier for me, I can come right here and fit view to select the shape. And that's going to make it a little easier for me to use. So let's say that looks good to me. So for whatever reason, I do have this cube and I have this cylinder, which currently is up above it. Here's your arrow. Let's go ahead and drop it down. Let's actually put it inside. Let's put it inside of this cube. So now I have an option. If I needed to, I can change this solid object into a hole and we'll create a hole. We can take a look and see how, however we need it to be. Now I can do a regular click, drag a box around all items that I need, in this case just these two. Both of them are selected. It shows me here that I have two shapes involved and I have an option here to group them together and then eventually you'll have the option to ungroup. In this case, I want to group them together because they're going to take these two objects and they're going to make one. 
and they're going to keep the same properties of both objects and how they will affect each other. So in this case, I have a cylinder that is a hole, and I have a cube, which is a solid. When you put those together, you will see that the cylinder cut out a piece of the cube. This gives me the ability to combine and make all kinds of different things. Like I said, Tinkercad is uh, very basic on the surface, but it can actually get really involved. So if I wanted to, I can click and select both items, even though you really can't see that whole cylinder that was there. It is there. And I can come over here to ungroup, which will separate the items again. So maybe, for example, that wasn't exactly what I needed it to be. So now it brings them back to the way they were. So maybe, for instance, I just needed to make that in there just a little bit deeper. Select both of them again. Group it back. And now I have a deeper hole. So that's... Uh, a really uh, really basic uh, way you can do do manipulation we can also go into this shape for example we'll ungroup it let's go ahead and get rid of this and you'll notice that you do have different options here where you can use slider bars change your sizing and stuff like this you can change the amount of steps, radius of it, and now all of a sudden that cube just became a spear. So that's an idea. Now keep in mind, we'll drop a cone in, for example, and you do have the rotate feature. You can spin it however you need it to be, whatever amount of degrees you need it to be. And of course, being three-dimensional, you have different ways you can rotate it. And that gives you the ability to place items wherever you need it to be. And once again, you can change and manipulate however you need it to be. So once again, just going to go back to the home view. In the next... Uh, part I'm going to show you the import feature and I'm also going to show you some basic text and the scribble feature which is really cool it's uh, helped me out a bunch of times and then eventually of course we will get to the export feature and we'll be able to uh, export our file for printing or put it into a slicer or whatever the case may be just keep in mind with these 3d files while a lot of times they're used for 3D printing, they don't have to be. If you have the means and the resources and the know-how and everything, you could drop these things into a, who knows, maybe a video game. Could be a next Toy Story movie. There's all kinds of possibilities. Anyway, I'll see you on part three.